G'day friends! Welcome to today's video where I make a zine. And if you don't know what a zine is, don't worry, I don't know what it is either. <laughs> Basically, I was over on Jane Davenport's blog where all the Davenport Party Design Team members uh, contribute fabulous projects. So um, I was over there getting inspired by one that Ali Brown just posted, I think last week. Um, or this week, and where she made a zine. And I thought, what on earth is that? How do I get in on that? I watched the entire video and immediately Instagrammed her and was like, uh, I need to do it. And she was super encouraging and supportive. So uh, I jumped on the bandwagon and I made one. And um, you all know I've got tons of junk lying around. So I just wanted to add all of it to, uh, to this zine. And, um, I totally like took a cue from Ali, made it a little interactive, put prompts on there. Um, if you want to know how to make it, like, you know, what I'm doing here, cause I've already like cut up and folded this zine at this point. Uh, if you want to know how to do it, I honestly couldn't explain it better than Ali did herself. So jump over to Jane's blog, janedavenport.com forward slash blog, and look for Ali's project about uh, zines and how to make them. And uh, she's got a really great video. I love the way her zine turned out. I love her colors. I, I can't say enough. Ali, Ali is my inspiration uh, most days, and I'm always watching her videos as I'm creating. Funnily enough, I was actually watching them as I was doing this. So, um, um, yeah, I love to be inspired by the community that's out there, and uh, and I wanted to give this a go. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put these uh, copies of this zine in the orange grab bags, the little orange grab bags that I'm bringing out. I think maybe next week. I want to say next week, but you know what I'm like. So <laughs> uh, yeah, basically I wanted to uh, give it a go, and it was really really fun. And I think. The best part about it uh, is obviously working on a loose leaf sheet. I could start again, um, but because they were going to be photocopied and uh, reproduced, I didn't have to worry about gluing everything down, you know, so that it would last 20 years. I could just use my favorite little tape runner. It's Sticky Thumb Tape Runner by American Crafts. You know, I didn't have to worry about things being perfect. Uh, I liked the the feel of it, the scrapbooky, art journaly kind of feel of it, and uh, I just kind of went nuts with all that stuff that's laying around. Uh, you you know, I've got the orange bag under the desk, which is, you know, where a lot of this crap is from. <laughs> a lot of these old sketches and photocopies of things. And uh, now I've got this little gold box that's sitting just off camera to the left of camera here. And um, and that's where I'm storing like my handmade journal tape samples, all the, you know, the prints that went wrong, um, any sketch that I have that I just you know, that bag is so full at this point, I've now started on a little gold box. So, <laughs> uh, I'm still doing little orange grab bags, that's still gonna be my thing, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm gonna have to change the name to, like, gold box slash orange bag, I, I'm not gonna bother with that, but just so you know, uh, the hoarding is at all new levels. Um, but like I said, it's not hoarding if it ends up in a journal. And I wanted to show you, uh, that this zine, because some of you might be like, why, why do I need that? What do I want that for? Um, I've made it a little interactive, like Ali's, so there'll be, there'll be prompts on there that I'll go through, um, but you can make other things with this zine. They fit into a photocopier, so uh, I, at the end, I'll show you. I ran a craft paper, a craft cardstock through the printer and photocopied on that and just made some fun little bits and pieces, and I'll explain what I did at the end. Sorry, you're going to have to watch to the end to see it. <laughs> but um, yeah, you don't have to just use it as a zine because I know it's a little bulky and people don't really want to, you know, tape that in their journal and have this like book inside of a book kind of thing. But uh, you can turn them into other little projects too and stash the zine somewhere else or just lay it out flat and glue it in that way or just throw it away. I don't really care. <laughs> It'll be yours. It'll be from the little orange grab bag. So uh, yeah, I just, I loved this project. That first page, I wanted this zine to kind of be about, you know, you. And uh, I wanted you to answer the questions for you. Uh, I mean, I could answer them for you, and I, I'll go through and answer a couple, but, uh, but yeah, the first page, uh, oh my goodness, it was so difficult to figure out the layout. I had to use all those little post-it notes and write arrows for which was a double page spread and which was up, which was down, which was inside out. But uh, the first page just says, be you, do you, for you, love Jay, which is me. Uh, and yeah, be you, do you, for you. That's a message. Uh, I... I can't say more about it. That's, I'm, I'm really into it. I want you to all be you. There's nothing more exhausting on the planet than trying to keep up with a lifestyle or like, you know, a personality that is actually just not natural to you. So uh, I'm, I'm encouraging you all just to, to let go of those things that aren't truly you. Is that deep? Am I getting deep here? <laughs> it's very unlike me. 
Anyway, so uh, this next page, uh, I think the little banner says, when I look at others, I imagine. And uh, I've got a little space that I'll create to, to write your answer in down there. Uh, and I just, I don't know, when I look at others, I imagine how their day is going. Is that weird? Um, not all the time. Sometimes I imagine what their life is like. Uh, I'm not a super empathetic person. Uh, so I think it's just more of a curiosity, like a big brother type curiosity, like maybe a little voyeuristic. I don't, like, I just want to know about their lives for no reason. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that's my answer to that question. When I look at others, I also imagine how happy they are. Um, because some people can be really happy, but just have that face that don't show it. Or some people look really happy and maybe aren't really happy behind the scenes. So that's something that runs through my mind a little bit. My goodness, this is getting deep. I need to scrap this whole voiceover. I, I don't need to be this deep. <laughs> uh, here's this uh, gorgeous fro that I did with some Jane Davenport watercolors in the Brights palette. Um, I'm using Copic markers to color in a lot of this stuff, uh, especially when I've, um, you know, printed something from an inkjet printer. I find like once the ink's dry, Copic markers, you know, won't bleed any of it. Watercolor will kind of warp my copy paper a little bit. And, you know, sometimes if I add too much water, I'll start to reactivate the ink that the inkjet printer used. Um, but yeah, same thing for the washi tapes, the handmade journal tapes. Um, I have so many samples lying around and so many um, test prints that maybe didn't work out that great. And I'm always trying different products on them to see how it works. I've mentioned before that if you're going to use wet media on there, just to use a little bit, like use it sparingly, maybe test a little part of it, uh, because... It, it may reactivate the ink. And the reason that I made them the way that they are on paper is because I wanted them to, um, I wanted you to be able to color them easily. And they're the most easily colored with Copic markers. Uh, that won't bleed any of the ink on the journal tapes. But maybe if you add too much water in a watercolor, that might start to reactivate things. So uh, yeah, color them with Copic markers if you want. I've got in Instagram photos where I've completely colorized a tape just running, you know, a green marker over the washi tape. And, um, and you can put... Uh, what's it called, like jelly roll pens over the top, pull out some of those highlights again. Uh, I like the way that the tapes are made just because they're paper and you can work with them with your favorite products and, you know, there's no resist on there. There's no coating that's kind of, you know, let your paint sit on top or your, uh, you know, your pens kind of smudge all, all over the place. They're just like paper. So, uh, yeah, that's that message. The other one, what did I say? When I gaze into the future, I see, oh, uh, when I gaze into the future, I see me losing some weight. <laughs> uh, hopefully in the very near future, because it's kind of becoming a bit of a nightmare at this point. Um, a lot of this arts and crafts is very like sitting down all day. So I'm gonna have to find a better way to uh, encourage myself to be a bit more active when I do it. Uh, maybe I'll put my paint, you know, Maybe I put my craft cart in a room, like at the other end of the house. Every time I need to get it, I'll do like a little cross country marathon. Um, I don't know. Have you got ideas for that? <laughs> Let me know how I could lose weight in the comments below. <laughs> uh, this prompt says, at night I dream about, uh, I have a really overactive subconscious. So I could actually just dream about anything that happened during the day and it pieces it together in the weirdest ways. I'm telling you this, I have to be careful with what I uh, fill my head with during the day because... 10 times out of 10, I'm going to end up dreaming about it. I don't know what it is, but um, yeah, it's pretty funny, some of the scenarios that I get into. Uh, and the last page just says, when I step out into the world today, you're going to witness a superstar. That's my answer to that one, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> Even though I'm probably not going to step out into the world today, I'm probably just going to sit at home and edit this video. Um, but yeah, I want you to answer these how you want to answer them. There's the print, so this is the copy. Uh, Ali mentions in her video, uh, which I th sometimes I think goes without saying, but I, I, I forget that a lot of people aren't doing this all the time every day and don't come into these problems. But when you're photocopying, you're kind of at the mercy of what your printer settings are and what you can do. Um, so sometimes the colors won't be as vibrant because you're using, you know, CMYK tanks. And, you know, if you're processing through Photoshop in RGB, like 
am I getting you with all these uh, little <laughs> dumb words that maybe I don't even understand? But yeah, basically the ink tanks can't reproduce all the colors that you use. But here I've printed it on craft paper and I'm just showing you if you want to cut up the little pieces and use them as prompts or little ephemera in your journal, that totally works as well. Uh, so those are little, you know, little ephemera pieces I made. If you want to cut two, oh, I guess four of the pages side by side, you can make this little, uh, I don't know, a little carry around scrap journal, maybe put watercolor cardstock in there and paint on it. If you want to get a corner rounder and cut up one of the spreads, you can make a cute postcard. I mean, you can do anything basically. So here's a side by side of the original and the photocopy. I, uh, I did go into Photoshop and tweak some of these and so I will print them out, not photocopy style. I'll try and print them as best as I can, but photocopying totally works. So I'm going to show you some of the close-ups. Sorry for my shaky hands, don't know what happened there, uh, but yeah, enjoy. <laughs> 